Hey, my YouTube family, how are you? This pride team is going up. You lions and lioness are showing great strength. And I know that you will constantly pursue um, your freedom, pursue your knowledge and pursue getting stronger in every event, in every situation. Many of you are emailing me and it's, it's a tremendous situation because you're talking about what do I do and how can I handle the panic attacks? I am literally panicking. And then some of you saying, how do I know that I'm having a panic attack? It's, it's just indifferent. I'm having problem breathing. Different things are happening. Different symptoms. What is this? When the body gets under great anxiety and you get under a panic attack, the body goes into intensive stress. And because there is no release uh, uh, in sight and you may feel helpless. When you feel helpless, I want you to know that there are resolutions. I'm going to put a number at the bottom uh, when I finish this video and you can look and see that number is an international number. It is a national number and this number will help assist you in case you're having panic attacks. You can't think of that number. You can always dial 911. You can program your phone where 911 is automatic or you can program your phone where there is a best friend or you can uh, call one of these uh, help centers and they will assist you and eventually they probably would refer you to counseling. Those of you in the state of Washington, my daughter, Carmen Bryant is a licensed therapist. She's excellent. She's one of the, the top therapists in the state of Washington. You can consult her. She's overcoming narcissist abuse. You can go to her uh, YouTube channel if you hadn't been on there already. Let's talk about your panic attacks when the narcissist come in. And usually the panic attack come with a lot of accusation, a lot of degrading and you feel like everything is your fault. So it comes with a lot of blame. And what happened is one day you are being blamed and things start happening. You notice that your breathing is quite intense. It's shallow breathing. It's getting difficult to breathe. And it feels like the room is caving in and it feels like you're having a heart attack. There's chest pains, there's sweating and you're sweating and it's pasty. And sometimes you can have blurred vision, your stomach, feels nauseated or it goes into pain and you feel like you're having a heart attack and this is stress and more, the more the narcissist talk his voice or her voice seem like it's fading into the the oblivion and seem like you're detaching from a sense of reality and the child's cry if you have children the children's cry seem like an echo you know it crying and the echo get louder and louder and louder and your head is pulsating and very 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 painful this is a panic attack you know it's a panic attack because the moment and sometimes the narcissist is going 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 blaming 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 and screaming and then the narcissist walk out the door bam the moment the narcissist leave, you notice your breathing start coming down. The palpitating start, the palpitation starts ceasing. You have an immediate, almost immediate, an immediate or almost immediate change in your physiological and your psychological state. And so many of you are having panic attacks. You feel that there's no way out. You feel hopeless. You don't know whether you're right or wrong. You don't know whether the narcissist is right or you're right. And you're thinking that maybe I'm the narcissist and maybe he's not the narcissist. And you're thinking maybe I deserve that. Maybe I need to find out what else I need to do. And the panic attack come. And when the narcissist and you notice that your narcissist get home about five o'clock, six o'clock, unless he just goes out and you notice close to that time, your breathing started you start getting shallow breathing your heart stop palpitating you can literally hear your heart through your ears your blood pressure rises your body have a numb sensation in your feet in your hands there's a tickling in your ears there's pain from the back of your ears down to your neck and you are seeing things and the room sometimes move and you are afraid for yourself 
and for the child. So you go to protect the child because you will know that you're out of source. And by this time, you probably don't have many of them. So you know that as soon as the narcissist gets away, or you can pull yourself away from the narcissist, the panic leave. But it starts the moment he pulls up in the driveway everything shift and you are hearing the echo you're grabbing the child and you're feeling unsafe with the child because now your sense of reality is detaching as the child's cry and the children are very sensitive they can pick up on you they don't know what to do and so when picking up on you and not knowing what to do you are grabbing that child and sometimes that can be dangerous because you don't know your strength in the middle of a panic attack and you are holding that child and you are gripping that child and you are in terror and and after a while, you know there's a child, but when you start to disassociate, you're not thinking of the child. You are event oriented. You are atmospheric oriented. You are narc oriented. So the narcissists come in, children are screaming. You have this look on your face and you feel like you're losing your mind and the narcissist come out and he said what is wrong with you you're losing your mind he grabbed the child and said you're dangerous to the kid you're a bad mom and that's why i can't trust you i'm gonna take the kids to mom's house because you are losing it and he's screaming at you and you're saying no i'm not losing it i'm just having a moment when you, it only happens when you come he said now you you're blaming me and you're finding yourself in terror you're finding yourself in fear and you're trying to breathe and the narcissist is offering no help toward the breathing and then he tell you if you're having a problem breathing then you just go on and die just die it's probably better that you die and you are hearing all of those words and the thing about it because you are in the negative mindset the words that are negative you hear the repetition of the word die 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 and then you're not going to die you're going to live and sometimes you have to get professional help don't be afraid to ask your doctor for professional help. Don't be afraid to seek out, seek out counselors that you may be familiar with, that are familiar with NPD. Talk to a friend that is detached from the narcissist and not a flying monkey for the narcissist. Talk to your family, your mom, that you know are detached from them and have them to check on you. Tell them you're having these panic attacks. And then once you explain to them, he's covert. He has one way he act at home, one way when we act in public. And I have nobody. I feel trapped. He doesn't allow me to connect with anybody. He calls me a thousand times a day. And when I leave and go to the store, he harassed me saying I'm trying to escape or I'm leaving the house. I'm leaving the children. I'm not doing right. So they are tied to that house. And you can tell when the panic attack uh, uh, intensified because now you don't even want to leave the house. You feel unsafe. You're glued to the house where you are becoming dysfunctional. And so what you have to do in times when you have relief, you have to read about it. Read about panic attack. Read about resolve. Go to a counselor. L get you a therapist. Talk to your family member. If you can, if you're homebound and the narcissist is not there, see if you can get someone to assist you. Sometimes the house may be, uh, uh, you may have cameras in the house. And he's secretly recording you. You will know that because he will come out and say something pertaining to that. But what you have to do, you have to get aromatherapy, get things that will calm you down, get programs, programs with scenery. They have all kinds of programs with scenery sceneries on TV and take that moment and relax. Put on music that caters to you. If you are a believer, prayer. If you are a believer, the Bible. If you are a believer, get on Christian program. Those of you that are not believers, you believe in meditation, you believe in other ways of re relaxation and the chi part of you get into the center of energy that you have. Look, you, ha you have an answer and it can happen. But what needs to happen, what has to happen is you have to get a resolution because the panic attack can increase and it can become severe.
And when it becomes severe, you don't want the narcissist to, to film you in case they got cameras and you are panicking all over the place and, the, and he wants to take you to a court system. You need to get yourself together. Practice reading. Reading brings you into where that author is in their mind. And so you read books of, 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 of beautiful glaciers animal books, nature books, confidence books that talk to you as a woman, talk to you as a man, talk to you as a person that gears your mind away from the problems. Breathe, take breathing moments, go to a place and just breathe in and hold it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then let all of that air fill the jaws that are filled with air. Just blow it out and do this about five to seven times. Relax and just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and breathe out. And you'll notice with each breath, you're relaxing and your attachment to the atmosphere is even changing. There are things that you can do because many of you are by yourself. Many of you are isolated and many of you are alone and you can do this. Those panic attacks are temporary and they are brought on suddenly. And I mean, they come out of nowhere and some of you head to the door and the moment you get to the door, boom, you open the door and it's like, opening up a stress arena and then it start to happen. Breathe one, two, three. When the narcissist is not there, when the panic attack, the panic attack increase, it usually is because you're going further into the stress zone. But what you can do is pull yourself back. Breathing help you recant the situation. Breathe in Take that breath in and just count it, count it, count it, count it, count it, count it, count, it, count it, and blow it out. And you do this several times. Talk to your children. Let them know sometime mom may get a little intense, but when mom get a little intense, just say, mom, breathe, mom, breathe. And that child, every time they see you get a little intense, they'll say, breathe, mom. You sit down and you breathe. And you get ministry to yourself, get music. If you like classical music, you like praise and worship music and you like jazz music, whatever music that curtails to you, put that music on and have a regiment. Practice a regiment when you get in these situations that automatically, when you start feeling the stress, that pattern goes right into motion. Boom, you start breathing. You get water, cold water, cool yourself down. And then you start putting on the music and you start talking to yourself. Breathe, are you okay? Everything is okay. And the children are saying, mom, breathe. This will help you. The narcissists intentionally stir a pa panic moment because they are diffuser of peace and infuser of terror. They want you to feel panic because when you are panic, they're locking you into that bun where you don't go anywhere. You don't trust yourself to go outside. You don't trust yourself to drive. And as you go into these panic attacks, slowly you start removing yourself from all of your independence because you used to be independently, independently driving to where you want to go. Now you don't drive because you don't trust yourself to drive. You you, you don't go shopping. You need someone to go shopping with you because you don't trust yourself in a crowd of people. Because when you get in the crowd, all of the, the, the horns of the cars and, and the tires and the motion of the cars, all of a sudden, boom, things start going into slow, mo slow motion or things start speeding up and the sound density increases. And so it seems like things you're in a thick fog and you feel like you're moving in slow motion. And so now there seemed to be a detachment when you go out. And so now you stay in the house, you stay in the house for shopping, you stay in the house for driving, 
and now you're neglecting yourself. You used to bathe. You can go a couple of days or so without bathing. Now, sometimes you go a week without bathing. The narcissist is asking what is wrong with you. And then they're giving commands that are detriment to your very life. And so now you got to start where you bathing again. You're taking care of yourself again. And if you like aromatherapy, you speak spray different uh, fragrances and sometimes you can't trust yourself with candles because in a panic attack that may not be good. So what you do is get cologne. If it's, you don't have to even get expensive cologne, get cheap cologne, wipe down your walls, wipe down the furniture part that doesn't take the paint off the furniture and just illuminate the fragrance to your mind where it opens up to the atmosphere. And you do mirror therapy. Mirror therapy is when you can look at yourself and it may take a minute. That's why I suggest a therapist. I suggest a counselor. I suggest even a psychiatrist. You know what you need and don't be ashamed to get it. That's what they are there for. They are there for you. You just need to make sure they understand NPD because a lot of times when you tell what you're going through, they want to diagnose you and put you on medication because they think you're the problem and ignore the narcissist. And you never ever go to a clinic or a doctor to tell I'm married to a narcissist unless you have got a, a medical diagnosis that your husband or wife is a narcissist and you can prove that with a diagnosis, but you don't ever tell them what you're thinking. Or oh, I looked at videos and these videos say you don't do that. You go in there and tell them your situation, your problem. Then when they start asking why are you stress, you can tell them I may be stressed because my marriage is going through a trial or I'm going through some physical challenges. And so when you go there, never ever tell them that you have a narcissist that is tormenting you. And if you are being physically violated, you can report that to the police. You can tell the police, but I'm telling you when everything start closing on the onslaught, hearing change, vision change, emotional change, you get a metallic taste in your mouth. Your hands are sweating. And you feel terror and fear. It's time to move because these things come on very, very suddenly. They are not gradual. And I'm telling you, there is a way out. And when you are there and you're away from the stress, listen to these videos. Listen to strength. Because a lot of times you feel that you can't handle things in a panic attack. You feel that you're overwhelmed in a panic attack. You feel like everything is closing in on you and you're getting more and more and more and you have no way out. And the narcissist is giving you more responsibility that you can't even do. And so you're panicking because you know the repercussions when he comes. He's going to degrade you verbally. Some of you got physical violation, physical violation. You have to report it to have a report in case you have a court system. You have a report of physical violation and they want to accuse you of being a, a, a bad parent. And when it is that you're having a panic attack, go to your physician. Your physician can help you. A lot of times they're going to give you medication. If they give you meditation, medication to calm, you don't need medication that's going to make you sleep with those children. You just need medication that's going to calm you. I don't have any pharmacology experience and I don't have the meds that a nurse, the knowledge that a, uh, that a therapist will have in pharmacologists. So I suggest that you go to a therapist who's very knowledgeable of NPD and very knowledgeable of your situation. Go to a psychiatrist. There are numbers. There are uh, domestic numbers. And these numbers, no matter where you are in the United States, these numbers, you can cater to you. There's someone that can uh, minister you, to talk to you, to take you out of that stress zone, to get you to breathe again. And you notice it's just like a cloud things start lifting and like a cloud start fading away that stress start fading and things start opening up again and you start things stop moving you start seeing things 
for what they are. You can see the child looking at you. You can see the kitchen, the furniture, your breathing, the palpitation stop, the sweating stop. You don't feel like little ants running through your head. Your stomach feels all right. You're coming out and you have to breathe. You have to practice self care. You can handle this. When you can't handle this, don't take it. You don't have to take the responsibility that you don't feel the propensity to handle that. You don't have to take that. Get someone with you because a panic attack can come on at any time and put them in your speed dial where you dial one number, boom, they are there. And you don't want them with the narcissist to become a flying monkey, separate that relationship, Keep them away from there. You can do this. You can do this. You are more powerful than what you think. And you will not be destroyed. And you're not going to lose your mind. And you're not going to go down. You're going to come up. You're going to take it one day at a time. You have video family. You have a therapist that can be available to you. Go to your doctor. Tell your doctor what is happening. Get your journal. Hide the journal between the mattresses. Hide it under a dresser. Hide your journal. Journal your emotions. Journal what you remember. Journey as you go in. If you cannot, journey when you come out. Always have a ledger. Have hardcore evidence that is written by you of situations that you're going through because sometimes when you're writing in a ledger it's self-talk and that self-talk is still talk to you and that talk to you will bring you through panic attack mean i'm dealing with something that i don't think i can handle i'm dealing with something that is more than what I can handle. I'm dealing with something that doesn't seem like there's no hope or help in it. And I'm telling you that that is wrong information. You are powerful and you are strong. We're going to get you to the point where you are convinced. And once you are convinced, you're going to notice instead of panic, you got resolve. Instead of panic, you got resolution. Instead of panic, you got answers and instead of panic you become a strategist you become a woman now that has taken her destiny and moving in it a panic attack is not the end and it will not be the beginning of the narcissist because i'm telling you you have a tribe you have a pride and these lions and lioness are in your corner and know this you are never ever alone that will never happen i love you so much please write me destiny helper 12 s at gmail.com destiny helper 12 s at gmail.com you are going to make it don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel please push the bell and every time I come on, you will get an alert. You will be the first notified when I'm doing a fresh video and know that you are loved genuinely and cared for and panic is not your end. It is your victory and overthrow to the solution for the rest of your wonderful days that you will enjoy. I'm Helen Sattler. I am your destiny helper, and I will see you on the next video. Breathe in and breathe out. God bless.